Hello friends, today we are going to explore PyTorch, a tool for building neural networks. We will make these concepts easy to understand whether you are just starting or want to learn more. Let's dive in. PyTorch is a tool many people use for machine learning, especially for deep learning, which is a type of artificial intelligence. It's known for two big features, tensors, which are like smart lists of numbers, and automatic differentiation, which is a way for PyTorch to figure out how to change numbers in the tensors to get better. In PyTorch, learning is when our model gets smarter and give better answers. Training is like teaching the model by showing it lots of examples. And model parameters, think of them as the model's tools to learn and improve. These parameters change and get better as the model learns from data. Let's talk about tensors. They are like advanced lists or tables of numbers. PyTorch uses them to do calculations quickly, especially with the help of a GPU, which is part of your computer really good at handling lots of data. Tensors are super important for calculations in PyTorch. Now let's walk through the PyTorch training process. It is a cycle. First, we go through all our data several times, which we call epochs. In each epoch, we don't use all data at once, but in small groups or patches. The model then guesses the answer. That's the forward pass. Then we see how good the guesses are and calculate the loss. Then comes the backward pass, where PyTorch figures out how to change the model's tools the parameters to make better guesses. We update these tools, clear out old information, and if we want, we check how well the model is doing and make some tweaks. In PyTorch, when our model works with data, it keeps a careful record of all the operations it does. This tracking is like keeping notes for a big math problem. It is super important because it helps the model learn from its mistakes and get better during the backward pass. The forward pass is when our model makes its guesses. Then we calculate how wrong or right these guesses are. That's the loss. PyTorch uses something called computational graph to keep track of all this. The backward pass is about learning from the loss. The model adjusts its parameters to try and get better. Backpropagation is a bit like the model looking back at its work and learning from its errors. It uses the loss to calculate something called gradients. These gradients are like directions for the model to know how to change its parameters the tools it uses to get smarter. PyTorch does all this using the computational graph we talked about. After figuring out the gradients, PyTorch uses them to update the model's parameters. This is done by a step called optimizer.step. Think of it as the model taking a step in the right direction. This step uses a method called gradient descent. It is like the model going downhill towards making fewer mistakes, which means less loss. In PyTorch, we build models with layers, and each layer has its own learnable parameters. These are the parts of the model that change and learn as the model sees more data. Besides these standard ones, we can also add our own custom parameters, especially for complex models. This flexibility is key to building powerful models. There are times when we need to handle tensors and the gradients carefully. For example, detaching tensors from the computational graph or using torch no gradient. This helps especially when we are testing the model and don't need to track changes or save memory. 
It's like telling PyTorch to take a break from learning and just focus on showing us what it knows. After each training step, it is important to clear out old gradients. This is done with the optimizer.0 gradient. It's like cleaning the blackboard before solving a new math problem. If we don't do this, old information will mix with the new one, leading to confusion and wrong learning. So clearing gradients ensures our model learns correctly. Let's break down the PyTorch training loop step by step. Imagine this loop as the heart of our model's learning process. First, we run through multiple epochs, which means we pass our entire dataset through the model several times. This repetition is key to deepening the model's understanding. In each epoch, we handle the data in small patches. Why? Because it's more efficient and manageable than feeding all the data at once. Now the forward path. Here our model takes a look at the inputs and makes its best guess. These are the predictions. Next is the crucial step of loss calculation. We compare the model's prediction with the actual targets. This comparison tells us how far off our model is and is quantified as loss. Then comes the backward pass where the magic happens. The model learns from its mistakes by calculating the gradient of the loss. The gradient is like a guide telling the model how to adjust its parameters to make better predictions. After learning from its mistakes, the model updates its parameters. This step is done using the optimizer, which applies the knowledge gained from the backward path. Finally, we clear out the old gradients. Why? Because we want to start fresh for the next patch without any leftover data from the previous one. This step ensures our model is always learning from the most recent information. And that's the loop. It is a cycle of predicting, learning from mistakes, and getting better. Thank you for joining us today. We hope this video made PyTorch clearer and more approachable. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more easy-to-understand tech content.